can hear from yonder and we're going to be talking about how to use a chat pot and increase website to increase website conversions now Letitia is a native in this area thanks so much for joining us today I know that um every session I, I love your sessions I actually got really excited I don't always look at the weekly plan ahead of time. And I was like, oh, Letitia's on this week. And I, was like, okay. I was excited about that. So I know you're ready to, and keen to get into it, but I'll just remind everybody, if you'd like to get your questions answered, just drop them in the comment section of the chat function. Um, you want to take them at the end or throughout? I can take them throughout. I'm easy. I don't mind. Jump in whenever. We won't tell anybody. But okay, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so throughout. So just drop them in. I'll pull them through. Or if you're here with us on Zoom, most of you have been tuning in on social media. So just make sure that you do put your questions in there because we would love to answer them. Okay, I will drop off and let you drive. Okay, right. I'll just share my screen. Get the slideshow up and going. Hey, welcome, guys. Thanks for having me again to Digital Worst. I think this is like my third or fourth now. So um, just apologize um, in advance if you guys have heard my little intro before about who I am and where I'm from, but um, I'll try and make it as quick as possible so we can get into, into the body of the, of the workshop. Um, so yeah, today we're just gonna talk about how chatbots can increase your website conversions um, and your conversion rates. So um, I am going to cover. And, it might feel like I'm doing stuff that you already know, but I'm actually really going to cover your website conversion and ask you, is it a problem? Um, because there's no point um, talking about this if you actually don't know what your website conversions are to start with and if there's a problem. Uh, and then we're going to have a little bit of a play around how chatbots can help you eliminate barriers. They're more timely, they're personalized, and then how to use that data to actually help you improve your website conversions. So that's sort of like the topics that we're going to, to cover today. Um, so before I dive into the first section, um, I thought I would just give you a brief overview on who I am and um, why I'm here today. My name's Letitia. Um, I live in Taranaki, New Zealand, and I'm one of the owners and founders of a software business called Yonder HQ. And at Yonder, my role involves sales as well as marketing and customer success management. Um, if you're wondering, I hope you're wondering what Yonder does. Um, Yonder is a marketing platform that helps businesses to automate business processes and gather more customer data to help you improve and grow your business. So um, <clears throat> we, within our marketing platform, users have access to a range of tools that help boost their sales or website conversions, as well as supporting their marketing and sales team with um, and development team basically with data. So Yonder's set of features includes these um, chatbots or we've got live widget chat widgets as well. We also do customer surveys. Um, we gather reviews and then display them on your websites. Uh, we do website quizzes, which helps with um, helping people or giving people recommendations on your website, as well as increasing your engagement. And then we also do review management and data analysis in the back end panel. So that's just sort of a summary of, um, of what Yonder does. Uh, the main industries that we work with are, and our number one industry would be tourism, such as accommodation, activity providers and attractions. Um, but Yonder is also used by a range of other services. So professional services such as hairdressers, beauty salons and professional services such as lawyers and accountants. Um, our software also works really well for tradies, plumbers and electricians. And we work with a number of agencies who um, actually um, use our software on their clients' websites. So we've got a range of um, businesses, and so that's why I sort of can talk across across things. Um, my main examples today will be in tourism, but I can also pull on um, our experiences from other industries as well. Right, so I just wanted to start with diving into the first thing, which is um, what is website con conversion and what does it mean for your business? So every business website um, has been built to, like every website should be built to generate some type of conversion. Um, but depending on your business model, and the t uh, it depends really on the type of conversion that you're looking for. So if you're a service provider, then your conversion might be measured in the number of people booking a meeting or an appointment with you via your website. Um, if you're a SaaS business like ourselves, um, we our conversion number is the number of demos booked. Um, or online signups. Um, for e-commerce stores, it might be the number of products 
sold and for tourism businesses, it's for tours or hotel rooms that they've booked online. So it's really important that you're clear um, what kind of conversion and what it actually means for you. So for example, here I've got there, there's, there's one type of conversion, which is let's chat, let's gather your information. Another type, which is, yeah, let's buy these. We want to sell these products to you. Um, so just be really clear what um, point you want to get people to, um, because that sort of leads into the, the question is, do you have a problem with your conversion rates to start with? So um, when I talk to businesses, and the reason that I'm, I'm saying this now is um, one of the first questions I ask any business I work with is, um, what's your conversion rate and website conversion rate? And the majority of them um, cannot tell me what it is and don't know the answer to it. Um, I'm not an expert on website conversion optimization. And there is, um, and it's super important that as a business owner, you understand but it is really important as a business owner that you understand what it is. Um, to give you an ind indication of what a good conversion rate is like on your website, um, this table gives you a very broad indication and it's across all industries. So it's just a sort of, and it's sourced from um, Google. So it's not something that I've made up at the top of my head. But as you can see, the average conversion rate for a website is 2.35%. Uh, um, and that's considered a good conversion rate. And about 5% is a really good conversion rate. And then anything over 10 is basically you guys are smashing it. Um, so when you think about that, these are quite low numbers um, overall. But when it, if you're sitting in these ranges, then you should feel all right about yourself. But um, the next thing I'm going to say to you is how do you work it out or make sure you have worked it out. So to calculate your conversion rate, um, all you've got to do is divide the number of conversions or the desired action that you want them to take, like filling out one of those forms or selling a product or getting a demo, by the total number of visitors to your website, and then multiply by 100 to get a percentage. So for example, if your web page had 17 sales of a product that you're selling, and 500 website visitors last month, then your conversion rate is 17 divided by 500 multiplied by 100, which is 3.4%, which is actually a pretty good, like if I just go back to that, that's sitting above the average, okay? So just I just want you guys to put this these conversion rates into perspective because when we go into how a chatbot can increase your conversion rates, to be able to measure if it is helping your conversion rates, you actually need to know your conversion rate really well and know what you are tracking in your conversion rates. Um, <clears throat> please note that setting up a chatbot onto your website is not the only thing you can do to improve your website conversion rates. There are lots of little changes that businesses can do to improve your um, conversion rates today. And I'm just going to focus on chatbots because that's my area of expertise. Um, but it's definitely not the only one available. And I would encourage you to explore um, other ideas with your marketing um, marketing and sales team as well um, and things that you can look at are like website layouts customer experience uh, or customer experience design um, and there's lots of other little ways that I've heard that people can increase their website conversions as well so chatbots is just one option that I'm giving you guys today um, <clears throat> I'm focusing on it because and, and the reason that I am and I've already said it is because yonder um, we, we do chatbots and we know and we've seen the benefit that it does um, I wouldn't be able to sell a product that I didn't fully believe um, converted and did what I said it did. So um, I am very passionate about the, the benefits that they can give businesses. So um, here's an example of a business that we've worked with, um, Polynesian Spa. And um, for example, their chatbot answers 86% of their questions coming through. But what they've seen a massive increase in is their conversion rate of the website since they've put in Yonder. And um, they wouldn't, and, and I fully understand this, that they didn't want to disclose the increase completely of it because it was quite like they were really happy with it. Um, but it is enough that they continue to use us after a number of years and it pays itself off within a couple of months. And so the ROI on it is very important for them. Um, and so I, I think even a small, and you need to consider that even a small increase in your conversion rates on your website can actually be a huge increase on your online sales. 
So you just need to get your data right or your um, numbers right to be able to track it completely. So um, yeah, we've seen a massive increase in, in um, website conversions. So it's really exciting. So the first thing, one of the ways that chatbots, sorry, if I'm talking too fast in a Murray, I'm just gonna check what time is, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go through this fast so you guys can, can, can get on with your day. But um, also just ask me some questions if you've got any. But the first thing um, or the first way that chatbots can help you increase your website conversions is actually by eliminating some of the barriers to booking. And one of those is the need to contact your customer service team for your simple inquiries. So one of the reasons that people do leave a website without converting is because when information isn't easy to find, a large number of people will just give up and, and leave your website. So on the other hand, when you get um, when you can get your simple questions answered immediately, then they can move along the customer journey a little bit faster and get to your conversion goal quicker. So in tourism, approximately, so I can give you an example that for in tourism, approximately 10% of people, once they've had their basic question answered quickly, will go ahead and push the book now button and actually go to the, the goal or the conversion page. Um, there has been a big change in how businesses manage and website visitors engage with frequently, like these are basically frequently asked questions, right? So 10 years ago, frequently asked questions were on their own web page, like um, with big blocks of text and um, you had to like scroll through and, and read them all. Um, that is less common today. There's still usually an FAQ page on your website, but if you've got chat, then people usually will usually use that one before they go to the FAQ page. And the reason for that is because it is easier to find them, especially if they're on mobile devices, which basically a lot of people are now when they're searching and you'll know for your own business, how many people are on mobile versus desktop. And it's just quicker and easier to read and get the information you want. Um, so again, another change that we've seen in websites over the last few years is that they've become more simple and then like there's less text on there now, which is great. Um, and although this helps to improve conversion rates, it also does increase the need for people to actually contact customer service to find out some key details that they need. Um, so people, if you think of it, people are using searching in Google and getting answers on the first page. So if they can't do that on your own website, they just get really frustrated and it can, it can just lead to people leaving your website without actually going and booking or doing the conversion that you want them to do. So um, a chatbot is ideal tool to provide basically um, accessible large amounts of knowledge um, to your website users. So they work in a similar way to Google search is in that visitors just type in a query and the chatbot can reply with a concise and accurate response. Um, and then they can also direct them to a page that, um, that they can find the information if the chatbot doesn't, doesn't do them or it can direct them to the page where you actually want them to go. So the, the let's talk page, for example, a few, few things back. Um, so in order to do this effectively for your business and for a chatbot to be able to work, um, a biz, you do need to know what your FAQs are. And you need to, um, if you don't already have a live chat or a chatbot on your site that can give you this information, um, then I would suggest that, and, and if, they, if you do, it should be in like sort of a top query list, like sort of this information that I've got here in front of me here, which basically, this is from the Yonder dashboard, but it basically just shows what the top 10 queries are. Um, coming through on their chats. Um, and if you don't have it, what you could do is talk to your customer. Your first port of call would be your customer service team. Um, they are a wealth of knowledge on what your FAQs are. Um, and then I would go and search through your um, emails and have a look through your like couple of last month emails and check what is the most frequently asked question coming through on those. And how much, uh, I'm going to go into this next, but how much time is that taking for your customer service team to reply to those um, emails and how much back and forth is required before people actually convert? Um, because that is your cost of acquisition that you are then putting, putting money on. Um, make sure that you're constantly, um, uh, yeah, so old emails. And then if you do have any Facebook Messenger chats as well, look, look through those as well. So basically find all your FAQs 
and then and then put them into a chatbot that can answer them quickly. Now, on another episode that I um, did with Anna Mari a couple of weeks ago, we talked about um, the difference between live chat and chatbots, and we touched on different types of chatbots. Um, definitely go and have another look at that if you're not too sure what type of chatbot to use to, to be able to give those FAQs to your customers in a quick, fast way that will then eliminate those barriers so that they can go ahead and book and increase your conversion rate. Um, I'm also just wanting to touch on the fact, I'm just going to shoot back to this page for a minute, um, to also make sure that you're constantly helping them to navigate. So um, when they're elim eliminating the barriers to booking, you're answering the common questions immediately. Um, you need to get people or give, send them to the right page to book or where they want to go. So if you, if you, for example, is you're wanting them to book a, a meeting with you or um, yeah, meeting or appointment, or for example, for tourism, it's a booking um, a tour, make sure that you've actually got that availability. If you can have live availability on your website, it is much better than just filling out a form and people have to wait. Like it's just that little bit less of a barrier for people to book. And this is what we see all the time through our chatbots. So if you can send them to your, uh, I use Calendly, for example, to um, book meetings in. If you can send them to that page versus send them to a contact us page, then that's just that little bit step deeper into converting them to what you want to, to do. And you can direct them to that via your chat box. <clears throat> right. I'm just going to skip ahead. Okay, so I am going to talk about Timely. So another way that um, chatbots are amazing to increase your website conversion is it provides timely responses to people's inquiries. So it kind of um, links in with the whole eliminating barriers to booking. So how many times do you guys ring up a business and if they don't answer the phone um, or don't answer your first attempt at an email, then you just give up and ring the next one in line? Um, I don't hang around very often at all. Um, if I can't get a hold of someone, I'm usually very impatient. So um, when people ring, they do expect you to pick up and they're getting that immediate answer. And so... Um, on your website to be able to provide that immediacy um, and, and, and it's just so important these days, then you, you, a chatbot's just there and is able to do that. So um, part of the, the expectations of people these days is this immediacy on demand. Um, I've touched on it again in another webinar. Sorry, I'm married to go on, but like the likes of Netflix, Spotify, Uber, they've all changed how we how we interact with um, society and, and, and technology these days that we do expect things on demand. So um, giving timely customer service is just an extra um, thing that you can do on your website that will increase your, um, your conversion rates. Um, we've done tests at Yonder that show that, um, yeah, that if you, if you use chat on your website, that um, people sort of expect a response. So if you're using live chat at the moment, people are expecting a response within about a minute, like less than a minute, but you've probably got about a minute before they'll drop off and they'll be gone or you'll lose them, you'll lose them in the conversation. So um, that's like, that's even longer really than if they ring up and make a phone call. But if you can catch them in those first few seconds, versus waiting then you just give them much more of a customer service friendly customer service that that is what they would get if they answered the phone so it's um in tourism and then if you think about it um oh and another thing you need to think about is when people or what time your customers need your help so um i challenge you as a business to look into some data um, and find out um, when they need help from you, when are they shopping, when are they looking to book a haircut or book a consult with you, is it nine o'clock in the morning, is it five o'clock at night, or is it eight o'clock at night when they're sitting in front of the TV flicking through their phones, um, because that is when they'll need the most engagement or the most um, customer service, so is your customer service able to provide that? Usually the answer is no, not outside of business hours. So um, for tourism, for example, 40% of chats come or need for customer service comes outside of business hours. And so a chatbot is just a really efficient way for them to do it um, and provide, provide that customer service. Um, 
I'll give you an example is the International Antarctic Centre down the South Island. Um, they That was one of their main drivers for setting up uh, a chatbot. So their quote is, it's a 24-hour helpline service for our customers, allowing us to communicate back and forth with them instantaneously. And that's basically what a chatbot allows you to do as a business. Um, that uh, even the live chats, even though they are really good, you cannot ban them. To, well, you could if you wanted to pay someone to do it, but you'll find that it's a lot more cost effective to run a chat bot. Um, and if you have international customers, no matter what your business, then having a chat bot available 24-7 is even more important because they are, so we, they're just not online when we technically are online. Um, and we saw this in, so Pre-locked, uh, pre-COVID versus post-COVID for yonder chatbots, um, the usage of the chatbots or the time that they were used actually changed quite a bit when it switched to a domestic market versus an international market. So, um, if you yeah, just consider your customers when they're shopping, where they're shopping from, or looking from, um, and then just be there for them. And that's what chatbots allow you to do, which then improves because everyone knows that improved customer service um, leads to more sales. So um, another way, this is always controversial, this one. Another way that a chatbot can help you increase your website conversions is by providing personalized help to every website visitor. So there, so um, I'm just going to say this, um, is that there's so many businesses who pride themselves on their personalized service and, and says it's what sets them apart from their competition. And I can totally agree with you there. I think it does set you apart. Um, and it's these businesses that often say to me, oh, we could never use a chatbot. They're so impersonal. So I just wanted to, um, to touch on this and actually um, face it head on because I, I, I agree with you that um, to some extent that yes, customer service and being personalized is so important. Um, but also the two points that I've made above are even more are really important as well, especially on websites. Um, and I think and I believe that a really well built chatbot should be looked at as an extension of your well oiled customer service team, basically. So they they can be super helpful and personalized to a point. And it really depends on how well your chatbot is built and trained um, and how well you know your customers as to how effective they are and how, how good they can be and what a good match it can be for your business. So um, I, I challenge anyone out there that really um, questions that, and I, and I totally understand it, is that um, j just look into them a little bit more and, and go, go in with an open mind. I believe that there is a place for them. Um, at Yonder, we've built many customers, um, what's called a Help Me Choose, or um, in this case, it was what's popular feature on this example here was what's popular. And this kind of, this, these kind of builds in chatbot can act like a personal assistant and um, people can just, and it can help people to decide what's the best option for them. It can ask them some questions and lead them to, basically lead them to your conversion goal, which is kind of, it's called conversational marketing, which is sort of like you create a conversation that goes through and, and gets them to where you need to go. Um, with staff shortages all around the country, um, this is a really good way for you to be able to give your customer service, um, give your people a good customer service, personalized customer service, um, while not relying on taking away staff time, especially with those general FAQ questions that you get. Um, so hopefully I've sort of, um, yeah, it, it can be very personalized. It just really depends on how they're built. Um, and it can answer some of those questions. So we've got one function in um, Yonder that just tracks how many times the chatbot's um, been said, it's, people have said thanks to it. And it's actually quite funny how many people say thanks to the chatbot. Um, we're not sure, like some businesses of ours disclose that it's a chatbot, some pe people don't, or businesses don't, they get to choose if they want to or not. But um, we do think it's quite cute that people say thanks. Um, and so perhaps that, and we think it's an indication of the, the quality of the, the chatbots and the fact that perhaps people are unaware that it's not, it is a chatbot and they're not just talking to a real person. So I think that you just need to, to have some things in place, some measurements in place to check that people are still feeling like they're getting that personalized service from you. Um, another way that you can do that, and if you're worried about the personalized service, 
um, is to look at the, the building of the hybrid chatbot. Well, make sure that you've got a hybrid chatbot in, in place, which is basically, we call them hybrid chatbots, which is basically where there's a chatbot that does all the, the generalized um, simple questions, but then your staff can actually take over and, and sort of jump in at any stage and take over the more personalized questions that come through that need a little bit more personalization. So that's an option that I think um, businesses, some businesses aren't aware that you could have, which is that you can sort of have a bit of both, best of both worlds, which is when you can answer your, those, eliminate those barriers to booking, those basic barriers to booking, but then also often offer that personalized customer service um, on those, on those more stickier um, special, specialized questions that people, people need a bit more help with. Um, so that's a great way to be able to, <clears throat> to be able to, um, increase your website conversions as well um, and personalization is just a must at these this time of, at this this day and age so um, being able to do that is really important um, some chatbots can say oh what's your name um, and then start addressing you by their name when they're talking to you just little things like that can make a big difference um, right sorry if I'm talking too fast Please jump in and ask any questions if there is any in a worry, but I'm just going to keep going. Um, continually improve using your data. So basically, oh, is there some questions? I have a question. Okay. Yay. So um, from structural sense, cool. Assuming chatbot is installed and operate on my website, can mm -hmm. I direct queries from various platforms to the chatbot on the website? For example, queries for from emails, Facebook Messenger, phone calls, et cetera. So um, it depends what all systems are different. So for Yonder, we integrate with Facebook Messenger. So Facebook Messengers come into Yonder and it's answered by the chatbot as well. Um, emails, no, I, haven't, I don't know of a system that does emails because um, they're a different kettle of fish altogether. And usually emails, people write differently than what they do in a chat for emails. Mm -hmm. But um, And then there is a few other systems that some integrate with Lime or is it Line, the um, Skyping kind of thing from overseas. Oh, um, I don't know. Yeah, there's there's one called I can't remember the exact name of it. Um, but yeah, there is a few that can integrate with other messaging systems, so that your whole customer service that it comes through messaging go through to your chatbot. Yeah, yeah, and I would highly recommend it because then you're only training one system. And you can and you can be across all platforms at once. <laughs> now, if you wanted to know the difference, I did pop all the links to the well, the previous set, two sessions that you've mentioned are in the chat on all the yeah. platforms. So if you'd like to check those out for those of you on social media, you'll need to log into Digital Boost in order to view those. So um, if you're not oh. registered, good. <laughs> you've been caught out. Now that's good. I thought I'd just mention them instead of recapping on them. So no, that was good. That was good because there's so much good insight in those. They're worth watching. Mm. Yep. Awesome, go. Cool. Uh, so we're nearly finished guys. So I'm just gonna touch on um, how you can use data to improve your website conversions. Cause lots of people um, see the chatbot in the front end and think, oh yeah, it's really great. It can help with customer service. It can do all those things that I've just said to increase conversions. But I think this is actually, and, and we believe at Yonder that this is some of the most um, important things that chatbots can do and it's sort of overlooked by a lot of businesses um, and that is the ability to tap into your conversational data um, to improve website conversions and it might be it's a little bit of a roundabout way how it improves your website conversions but it's worth its weight in gold so um, for example and, and again I'm giving you yonder examples but any system that you use would have similar similar things in place where um, for Yonder, we group, you've got your conversation groups or your, your, your chatbot responses, for example. When we go into these, you can actually look in, we've got like insights areas where you can go in and actually look at all the ways that people are asking the questions that you've got set up. So operating days, for example, are you open in December? Is the running, operate over Christmas, days of the year you're closed? All this information actually goes towards informing how your website is built and how you display this information. Because if people are asking this information in chat, and that's what we keep telling our businesses, when people are asking information in chat, it's because they're not getting it from your website. And so 
from from these conversations, you can actually I I could actually dive a little bit deeper into these conversations than what I'm showing on the left by actually looking at what pages they're asking these questions on, and by knowing what pages they're what question they're asking on what page, and you can even look at when they're asking them, then you can start to get a really clear idea of what needs to be done on your website to improve your website conversions. And so a lot of the time, um, businesses will do A-B testing or they'll, they'll change a button here or change a button there. But in some way, it could just be as simple as making it clearer the some of the barriers to booking that people have. So some of the little hesitations that people have around um, opening times or one of the biggest things for um, tourism is pricing, children's pricing. So when you put a price out for a child, being able to put the age group that they're in is often missing from a website. And so being able to pick up that information through the chat data that you get and then be able to change it on your website can actually make a difference to how people book or when people book. Um, so that's, that's sort of some information that you can get, gather. Um, we had another, um, another example of website um, data that they were able to use to help conversion rates and it was huge was that they they launched a new site a new website is an awesome place to put a chat box because you or a chat because you get start getting data instantly on it so this site was up for three days and within three days it got asked hundreds of times about prices and um, we immediately picked up that that was really because we keep a really close eye on them when they go live to start with and that was a really weird thing to have so many like price be asked so much in the first few days so we we jumped in and had a look and it just so happened that price was three clicks away from the home page to find that uh, um, that question but the price question was asked on the top on the on the home page so the pricing question was asked on the pay, on one page, but it took three clicks for actually people to get there when we looked into their website. And so they changed it around. Um, and by changing it around, that question actually disappeared completely. It doesn't get asked at all now. Um, and it just made a huge difference to the customer experience on their website. So I would definitely recommend that this, um, the data that you get, you start actually using it. If you're using a chat already, or if you're looking at a chat bot, make sure that you're looking at one that can give you access to this data because it's like gold when you're looking at conversion rates. Um, another thing that we're able to do and that you should be able to do with all your messages is look at um, and learn more about your customers. So um, uh, Google is really good at giving you sort of what time people are, people are on your site, but um, it may not give you the exact information on um, what they're doing, like they, it shows what they're doing on their site, but that maybe the barriers to booking on that site at that time. So when you look at, oops, sorry, we're able to pick up the time of day that messages are coming through, um, which may not be your peak um, website views, but it may be the peak time that people are actually purchasing. So that could be different. Um, so, for example, this is just a really quite easy example of the fact that 40% of chats is showing here coming outside of business hours um, for this tourism operator. But then they have a peak here as well. So there's, there's lots of different ways in data and, and like lots of different types of data that we can pull out of these chats to be actually able to show you what your customers are doing when. Um, that is different from what Google Analytics allow you to do. Even though, um, and then again, look at a system that integrates with Google Analytics. We in integrate with it so that you can set up um, Google Tag Manager and everything so that everything's trackable and that is measurable because I'm going to say to you again that you should be measuring and measuring and measuring so that you've got a clear proof of ROI or return on investment on any invest um, thing that you put onto your website. Um, but it is again, it's just a matter of getting extra data around how your people are using it. And with this information, then you can put in extra things. So, for example, a lot of our tourism businesses know that if a percentage of their chats come, they usually often come between five and eight o'clock at night. And so they know that they need to have someone either on, on available or they'll have a chat bot in place to be able to take off that slack of when customer service isn't there. Because, um, or at the moment with the domestic tourism, um, lots of people are booking last minute um, thanks to COVID. So they, they know that they need someone on there in that 24 hours before their tour to fill in the gap or to, to reduce those barriers to booking before they book. So this, um, the, the, um, 
yeah, conversational data through your chatbot is like gold when it comes to improving your website conversions. Um, it's make sure you find a system that you can easily um, access the data and understand the data or that they can do it for you and um, do regular reviews with you and, and start looking at your website and how it's going to go. So <clears throat> um, just, to, just to recap and, um, and do it, I've just, this is a really broad overview. I could go really deep and spend um, hours on like one topic, but I didn't want to do that to Anna Murray. But um, yeah, in, in conclusion, I want you guys to really understand your current conversion rates first, please. Um, so make sure that you know what your conversion goals are on your website and what the percentage is, like what's your percentage, your conversion rate percentage at the moment. Um, and then figure out if it can be improved. Think of that where your average is on there. Um, if you if you if you're five, if you've got a um, conversion rate of five, then you're doing doing amazingly well, really. Remember, if it's anything over ten, then you're a superstar. Um, but there's always room for improvement. I I agree. Um, and then chatbot is just one way that it does increase your conversion rate, and it increases it by eliminating barriers to people booking and the need for them to contact customer inquiries around those simple FAQs. Um, chatbots respond in a timely manner, 24 hours a day. You don't need to have staff on answering the phones after work time. Um, they also mean that if in today's world where there seems to be a staff shortage, um, it can be an easy way for you to be able to man a little bit more of your online community and not have to rely on staff to do it. Or um, we know a few businesses that have contacted us that have struggled to find staff to train to do it. And so they've been able to reduce their, their, their um, call center numbers by having someone answer their live chat immediately through a chat box. Um, and they can also be personalized. So being able to offer, offer that personalized engagement on a website to start with is really important. So um, a lot of chat bots, and I haven't, I haven't really shown it here, but um, we can we can do it, and I, and if you want to contact me, I can show you. Is that they they do little engagement pop ups, and um, when people start looking on your website as well, so they can actually engage them, and sort of say, hey, do you need a help, or I'm here to chat if you need help. So again, it's just offering that personalised engagement that um, that people in this day and age you can digitise and make super easy. Um, and then customer data. So I, I don't I think I've stressed that enough already. But um, just just use it, mine it, and then make don't be afraid to make changes on your website and then look back at the data and see if it actually has made a difference. So again, um, just keep a track of your metrics and, and and then measure your success using your conversion rates. So has your conversion rate gone up or down? If it's gone up, your chatbot's working. If it hasn't, then you need to look at why hasn't it and what else can you do to do it. Um, and perhaps it's something you could change on your chatbot or maybe it needs to be something you need to change on your, on your website. But um, it's definitely worth, we've seen um, in every business that we work with has seen an increase in their website conversions from it. So I definitely recommend looking into it. Um, and I don't think there's any more questions, Anna Murray. You can't hear me when I just laughed. I wasn't on yet. <laughs> I was oh, like, that's all right. Um, there aren't any more questions. Uh, however, I think that was just some really great insight and also recommendations on where to get started. Um, yeah. So we really appreciate it. I must say I'm a big fan of a chat bot slash live chat. I always, I go to it first now. I, I remember in the beginning, I was like, oh, I don't want to talk to a chatbot because I think they weren't really well you know the AI like the, all of the yep. systems and it, it just wasn't very well developed but you know technology has come a long way and I find them so convenient because I can ask a question and they'll either say it'll either tell me um drop your email in here and we'll get back to you and then I know someone's going to get back to me yep. or yep. it gives me all this information and if I still I like the ones where it'll give feed me information and then if I still can't get what I want it'll either transfer someone. me to a live person yep. or it'll take my email and that's yep. that kind of stuff just makes me feel like I'm really well taken care of yep. and I don't have to go fluffing around on your um I personally um I think there is a place for FAQs Yep. But I don't think that we have the patience for them anymore. No, I don't. Mean? Yeah, no, we totally we've seen that. So one of our really clever customers actually took off their um, FAQ page and just like kept the button at the top FAQs, 
but popped up their chatbot instead of went to an FAQ page. Mm. It was super amazing, their um, mm. engagement rate and their response rate. And it was a really clever way, we, like we hadn't even thought of it, like a clever way of replacing what was a static FAQ page that you'd have to scroll, like make everyone scroll through and read, which you just yeah. don't do, right? Like you're rolling your eyes versus, um, yeah, versus like an interactive, highly engaged um, FAQ page. It was really cool. Mm, so innovative that's fantastic I yeah. love stories like that yeah um, very yeah. keen to get started I find messenger frustrating yeah <laughs> I think you yeah, absolutely yeah. sometimes you know make sure that you do your due diligence on setting yeah. this up or contact folks like um uh, yeah. Leticia over at Yonder um set it up properly get the structure in there so that yeah. you've got a good um system in place and it really will give you some time back as well I think that yeah. that's you know you did talk about that I guess touched on it a little bit but I think yeah. that sometimes we don't realize how much time we're going back and forth with emailing or we're answering calls or we're doing stuff you don't have to necessarily have to do that anymore like automate some of your systems get some of your time back people are used to it now it's not as yeah. foreign you know um, especially yeah. depending on who your market is I mean, if yep. you're, if it's a younger market, they don't want to talk to you on the phone, probably. And like, I didn't, I didn't touch on it much today because I was talking about website conversions and um, I didn't want to uh, dwell on it, but, or not dwell on it, but really push it. Mm -hmm. But the time saved is, so for some businesses that we work with, it's not about the website conversion. It's just mm -hmm. about time saving. Yeah. Um, this like we, and we track, so we track how much time is saved via, via a chatbot and our average time. And I, I'm just, I actually can't tell you the average time, but I know that there's a number of um, businesses out there that we save over a hundred hours of time, uh, hours a month of their mm. staff time. Oh, um, you would. You but just more, would. Most, most of them, if they're smaller businesses, perhaps about 30 hours, but that's still a lot of hours a month that you've got to then put into like your sales, your marketing answering those emails that may need that little bit more of a customer. Like, so we see it as more like a um, first point of call to take off those. People like to call them those dumb questions or silly questions that come in, yeah. but it's kind of like, yeah, it gives you that freedom to then go and answer those, those really tricky ones or, or deal with those people that need a little bit more of the um, personalized touch. That's right. And just a follow-up comment here from Deborah's just saying, yes, time saving would be my focus. Yep. I mean, every small business, I mean, that is one of the most precious commodities of a small business yep. is time. Yep. Um, and if it's going to help your customer actually create a sale or, you know, actually get that conversion as, you know, both of these go hand in hand mm -hmm. as some of the most valuable parts of yep. <laughs> who you are. And, I know. And, you know, I know. So, and, yeah. but, but I feel like sometimes small owners, um, so in small businesses, they don't value their time as much as they should. And yep. I, and we like, we believe that anything they, any process they put in or any um, technology that they do needs to be time-saving. Like, and, and really beneficial to that side of things but it Absolutely. also needs to have the added benefit of something else so mm. yeah I suppose that's where chatbots do come in they've got that they've got the time saving factor which is I could do a whole webinar just on how much time you save and how you save mm. it mm. but also the website conversions is just that added added bonus mm. So two questions here. It says, how do you get, this is pulling in from Facebook, actually, from Natalie. Um, how do you get the chatbot to answer specific questions? And the second was, can you provide a link um, to that example? So, uh, yeah. Um, so the chatbots, depending on how you've built them, and I've talked to, I've talked in a little bit of another um, thing about how there's different types of chatbots that are built. There's AI chatbots, and then there's um, logic-based chatbots. Um, and if it's a very specific question, all you need to do is, if it's an AI chatbot, you just need to train the chatbot to be able to answer the question in multiple ways that it could be asked. So for example, if it's to do with, um, and I have no idea what the business is about, but if it's to do with um, how does this work, then you need to just come up with how, how many different ways can they ask that question, train the chatbot under that or with that data and then it will be able to answer that question um, and then that just takes a lot of time or some time from the business owner to actually understand their product and their customers um, and, and it comes down to how good like yeah just work with whoever you get to do it work with them to understand your product and and to build a chatbot that is effective for you.
Yeah, so it comes into this AI versus people who understand your market, but it also yeah. comes into a data set. So yeah. when she says train, what she mean, what you mean, Letitia, is that um, you're using a what's called a data set, and there's an yeah. input and there's an output. So the input would be questions that are frequently asked, and the output would be the answers to those questions. So what you do is you feed this data set with lots of questions that people have asked from maybe like a you from you pull it from all of your yep. um, inquiries that you've had. And mm -hmm. then you feed those in with the outputs. So what happens is, is it starts to connect those questions to the outputs and yep. you'll run some tests like the AI system will run some tests with the data set and you'll see whether or not it's working. And then if it's not working, you'll keep training it. And um, a lot of this can be done by the specialist who you get your chatbot from. They'll probably ask you for some information and, and they will do all this for you. But, um, but what it does, it learns over time. And the more information you give it, the more it's able to do its job. Yep. So it's, it's quite cool. Um, and it is, it sounds pretty techie, but it, it wouldn't be for you because you'd be using a system that's already like designed for uh, somebody who doesn't have to be an AI specialist. Yeah. <laughs> so so that, that's what we've, right that's what we've yeah. specialized in is, is doing it. <laughs> and there's two different levels, right? You can get a company that will do the whole lot for you and train it all for you. And then there's ones that can, that you had to do it yourself and manage it yourself. So it's your, your level of understanding and tech ability that will sort of determine where, who you go with and what you do but yeah don't be scared of that that was a really good example in Amari I should I should learn how studying to AI that. That. I was very impressed <laughs> <laughs> but um it, 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 do, it does sound scary but it's not scary it's just yes. a matter of um and I think the only thing that people need to be aware of is that the amount of data that needs to be in that in that storage is huge to be really effective in the chatbot. So if you can, um, the more data that you can feed it, or if I, as I call it, training that you can give it. It is called with, training. Yeah, yeah <laughs> then the better it will be. But that that just comes down to getting people like us to train it basically, which is what we do um, behind the scenes or getting finding someone that's really, that knows your business and has got an invested interest. Now we've got a few more questions here. I'm also trying to reply. There's questions everywhere. Pop, pop, pop. <laughs> so um, it says, uh, oh, and just a thanks. Thanks for that. You're welcome. So are you finding even older customers embracing the chat? Good question. Thanks. Yeah, good question. So we actually, um, it's really hard to know the age of people that chat. <laughs> but um, we did do a little bit of research when we first started. Um, and it was a wide range of people that used it. It wasn't just the young generation. Um, but that was a couple of years ago now. So I'm not too sure. But I'm imagining it's actually got better because of like COVID's kind of forced a lot of people to become digital. I know my parents are definitely more users of it now than what they used to be. Sorry. <laughs> No, that's all right. Trying to type and be present. Okay. Um, so our audience is split as a documentary film festival that has gone from in theater to online as well. Cool. Um, we have oldies who need guidance where the young ones obviously wouldn't to watch films online. Thank you. So that's what they were talking about. Mm. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah. like, um, so that's just a navigational chatbot, which is basically just, um, you'd know basically what the, I don't like to say oldies, but the oldies are asking or need help with. Um, if you can preempt that a little bit or even take them on a bit of a like journey so that it's sort of, you could, you, you wouldn't need a chatbot to do, you could do it with an onboarding and just say, hey, this is how we set it up. This is how we do this. So there's different ways that you could use or you could use the chatbot to do it. Um, yeah, but that's definitely something that you could use it for. Yeah, cool. Yeah, um, lots of great information here and lots of great questions. Thanks, guys. And now I've just said to um, somebody on our Facebook channel, and I'll reiterate it here. If you would like some more support on this, um, just contact support at digitalboost.co.nz. We will literally even set up a phone call with you where you can chat with the support team and help you walk uh, walk through, you know, what the differences are and, you know, what you're looking for. So, you know, what you're yeah. looking for when you get out there, um, we'd be yeah. happy to have a conversation with you. We'd love that. And in fact, later today from three to four, we're actually holding coffee and questions. Woo. So from <laughs> three to four today, uh, we will be in a meeting style. So, um, 
you can join by using the link. Go to if you're on Facebook, just jump to the group, and there'll be a, a link there, or you can go onto the Digital Boost website, and it'll give you a link to the session. Uh, if you hang out after the session, I'll I'll drop it in the chat for you, um, and you can join us. It is a it is a meeting style, so you can literally talk to us. The team will be there. Ask some questions. We can chat about that. Like that's something we can continue this conversation later today. If you'd like to join us, we'd love to meet you. Love to connect some names with faces as well, which is always cool. Um, but of course, you can always keep your camera off and um, and just be some a fly on the wall. Uh, we're happy with that as well. I want to thank you, Leticia. You've got COVID. Probably nobody does. Yeah. Such a bright, right. um, a bright star you know um <laughs> you've currently got covid you were too you didn't want to cancel because you didn't want to put me out and us out like the users out which i just find too much you know it's all right um, you can't see my <laughs> sweaty forehead <first. laughs> So we just want to, we just want to thank you so much. You went too far. I didn't know. So I couldn't step in until you were already here, but um, I, that, that level of dedication just really speaks to who you are. And, um, and I just want to really thank you from the bottom of my heart for, for joining us here today and, you know, sharing so much insight and um, we always love having you on and just some, some things here. Be well, Letitia. Thank you so much. That was really helpful. Thank you, Letitia. Yeah. We Thanks, really appreciate guys. you. And yeah. yeah. I just wish everyone good luck on their journey. It's um, it can be a bit scary, so don't definitely use an Marina team to to help you out. And I'm happy to answer questions. I probably I'll be quite um, yeah. I'm not going to push my system onto anyone. I will just help your business. Like I'm just there to help people. So yeah, definitely just good luck. Yeah, indeed. Um, go rest up. And, uh, <laughs> look Cheers. forward to seeing you again shortly. Um, yep. Wishing you well and your whole family well. Yeah. Go. See you later.